So, very happy to be here with you again for this masterclass at the International Guitar Festival and Competition of Brussels 2020. And um, I would like to talk today about legato, the connection between the notes regarding left hand. Of course, we'll, we may talk, we will talk about right hand a bit, but uh, especially the left hand and I will give you some examples, which are very important. And at the same time, uh, the choreography, how, how we could simplify things. Um, well, regarding the legato, when we have to play two strings, you know, two notes on two different strings, we always have to overlap the sound, you know, to let the sound be overlapping a bit. Otherwise, proper legato doesn't exist. I mean, imagine this is one sound and that's the other one. There has to be a moment here when both sounds are mixing, overlapping a bit. This is really basic, this is very important. That's what a piano does. You know, all the pianists have to connect the notes. And they do have, on top of this, the pedal which is supporting, but if they would not use it, like in Bach music, for example, they have to connect when there is legato, because one note has to connect to the other. Imagine if now I have this note and another note coming here, and there is no mixing. We may hear even a click, a little click of the percussion. We would hear that also in the piano, because there is a percussion much more softer than the guitar, in this case, and the piano, but we would hear that would be similar to a bad editing in a CD recording. So what we need to do is to let the sound overlap a little, a little bit. And this is example of, for example, this. If I have G sharp and F on the second string with the fourth from G sharp, but if I do you can hear? Now I'm putting my forefinger very flat. What I mean with flat is I'm placing it like this. You can see I am stopping with the low, you know, the, the belly of the finger, if I can call it like that. I'm stopping the resonating string. Means stop exactly in the same moment. And that's not legato. That's not a legato, and that's what I often hear in guitarists when they do, and even if they do, lifting this finger would also give us that disconnection, provide us this disconnection. With it, you can hear the quality of the connection is different than if. It may be needed at certain musical moments, certain musical passages. It may be needed that we do that. It's even better to do it with the right hand and not lifting the fingers of the left. But this is a different topic. We may talk about this later. The best would be, when it's legato needed, to connect and then to stop. Not to stop with the left hand later, but with the right. You see? Then you stop the resonating string, the vibrating string, after you have got the new note. I give you an example on a piece that everybody knows. Uh, Opus 9 by Sor. You see? Now, these passages include on the second, you know, on the second group. A chromatic scale. Chroma, the word chroma comes from Greek language and means color. And the color is changing like a rainbow. When you look at the rainbow, the colors are very connected. You don't see really the difference or the border between yellow and orange red and then blue green. We don't see that. 
Everything is mixing, so it's really well connected. And the music, as we all know, try to express all the rhetorical elements, all the rhetorical um, signs that we have in the language. At the same time, in the architecture, in the nature, in our society. So if I have a chromatic passage and I go and I play like that, I'm not corresponding, I'm not, I'm not um, expressing what the musical meaning of that passage is. And I see there a big, a big lack in the guitar uh, education in general, and I think there we can work a bit better. Because if we want to, to let our instrument be included, if, we, if our aim is to be included in the row, uh, in, the, in the row of great concerts, in great, great theatres, and be managed by great managers, then we need to, to talk the same language, the same language that pianists, that, that, that violinists, that singers talk. So if we have a melisma in the voice, it's not only for the voice. We do have melismas in Bach, in instrumental music. We do have it in music written for guitar, because a melisma is a passage where we have a vocal, and the vocal just is taking over the several notes. One characteristic has a melisma, is that it could not have big jumps, more than a third, with a vocal in the Baroque. It's not a melisma anymore. The composer will write a comma, or will write a consonant. And then we have again different kinds of consonants. But again, this is a different topic. So you see, I want to come back now to the importance of legato in the classical guitar. We have an instrument which is unplugged. This instrument is unplugged. So I have to make all legatos by myself. And I think it's a good challenge. We can do it great. When I have a plug-in guitar, and I give a little bit reverb, you know, to this speaker. Of course, everything turns quite easy. It's like playing in the church. And we believe uh, the acoustic help us. Actually, there will be always here if we have some issues with this. But of course, it's easier if I have a lot of resonance. Talking about resonance, it is important that we play with the resonance of the guitar. You hear that the A stays because, of course, the fifth, take, the fifth string takes it over, the sixth takes it over, even the first string takes a bit of it over. All the strings that have this in the, in the primary harmonics you know, will take it over. If my finger is, could be simplified when I play, you know, So, you don't need to keep all the time the fingers in places because you see written on the score that they're not going to be long. Not necessary. It is important, but now, really, pay attention to this. If I do, oh, an A comes over, that's bad. Or if I, if I take it early, oh, then it's obvious. It goes about hiding the problem. So if we go, I got a way that the note is taken over, has been taken over by the sixth string in this case, and I got to stop it also with my right hand in order to avoid the impossible noise that may occur, that may happen, that may take place into the harmony. So it is important that I. So I cannot take my right hand away and dance with it because there will be some musical problems in the performance. The right hand has to be like in the chamber, or like in the piano, like in all the instruments, you know, there when we need to work with it. And then when we have the time, then you can just shape the sound. If this is in addition to a good musical performance, then it's welcome. If there are problems coming, you know, getting into evidence because of this, then I, I don't think that is a good thing. So, you 
you see if I go for example or if I go in this arpeggio of the second violobos you see here I'm gonna use the first string as a connecting one and the E will sound over. Anyway, it stays in the resonance of the guitar and it will help me to hide the next attacks. So it's no good if while arriving here the left hand lose position or stability and we have top because then if I have stopped that E the note gain an accent if the note gain an accent then it's important and catch the attention and it breaks the flow of their pressure so I hope with this we understand the importance of legato legato is a priority have to be a priority for the guitar because playing staccato for us is easy. Any other instrument, any other instrument has to behave to play staccato. Has to do an effort. We don't need to do an effort to play staccato because it's normal for us. And a dirty staccato is even easier. If I play with this noise, or let's say, you hear the noises at the end. The noises take place when the vibrating string lose tension and this vibration, this amplitude in the vibration, make noises against the hard surface of the fret. So this is the noises that you are here. Those are the noises. Means that I gotta stop with the right hand with a soft surface. So if I play, no, that's the noise, yes? And we cannot say that we lift the finger slowly, especially when we are playing fast, you have to know that time. So it is important, you know, if I have, um, you see, if I do, that you don't want any connection before I, the string lose tension I gotta stop with the right hand and this applies to everything I'm gonna give an example you may know already which piece I'm referring to if I do Brower, Leo Brower first sonata third movement Cuckoo if I do it's not precise, it's noisy, plus the first string, E, may come. So I got it. Stop with the right hand. Means the same like here. And no with the left. So the left hand will be much more released. You know, and relief actually. We can do crazy things, believe me. We can do crazy stuff. But we cannot base our life in exceptions. Crazy stuff are exceptions. I can do this. You know, in this great piece by Maestro Steve Goss that I have recorded. Mm. the end I got this extension. It's an exception for this moment because I want to keep the bass. And he wrote this interval that otherwise we're, we're gonna stop. Not good. So the legato is the, the, the priority. The resonance is the priority and I can make it this way. So it's okay. But my life cannot be based in this. I can do in Paganini Capriccio, 
11. an extension but I cannot base the performance my performance on extensions all the time these are only examples of important principles you know what I'm talking about the principles and this applies also for the second violins for example you see our ear is cut by the follow the follow of note so um, we do have this follow of we are paying attention to this. We are not going to be disturbed by that ringing E, uh, which is, if you would see it, how I play it, if you would write that, it would be syncopated, kind of. It's not but the case. You have to don't forget that there is a psychology of listening. Our ear gives priority to certain things, and that there is a, mo a movement that we are already following. That's really very important. And you use those empty strings to connect, to provide you with a great resonance as a background, and on this base you do your great music. And this is what is most of the time a lack in the guitar. At the same time, if we have more resonance, we will have more volume because understand one thing. A chord is the addition of resonance, you know, each of the notes of C major chord. If I have, let's talk about the triada. You know, this triada, each one, the C, has the E in the own resonance. Resonance, you see? Normally this is um, this is the row of harmonics, the natural harmonics of the C. The E has but those are not disturbing too much because they are quite high connected to this. The G is also coming from the mean tone. So if I have that at the end it grows and that's what we need when we play a chord mm -hmm. I need volume and resonance Connecting the quality of the connection is very important. Now, if I want, I, need, I want something dry or then I need to be precise. If I want it short. There are many different possibilities of interpreting anything you want in life. But when we need resonance, we need to give priority to it. And the left hand choreography and position is very important. That's why I would suggest to everybody to practice not with extensions, not with extensions for the beginning. It would be, I call it half chromatic scale, because it's not 100% chromatic, that would be normal. Uh, so it goes about now being in the same position in order to ensure that our fingers are really moving equally and round enough, you see? Don't treat the forefinger this way and the others this way, then we have a disconnecting problem. You know, or a connection problem. So. Every scale is going to be the same. Then when we do this.
So then now we need to turn the hand. But we need to have the connection in the chromatic passes. So it's very important that we achieve this legato, that we understand the importance of it. Well, if we understand that the position has to be very stable, let's say, the vibrato also will sound different. Vibrato is a very important uh, element for the guitar. It's one of the elements that, that we have that other instruments don't have. For example, all the keyboard instru instruments except the clavichord. But at the beginning, the pianos, at the very beginning, when the pianos started to be developed, they had also a possibility of vibration, you know, changing the pressure of the key, and Carl Philipp and Manuel Bach actually talked about this. And in German, that was called a Webung. You know, Webung is um, when something is shaking, it's a, a little bit change of, you know, like a string which is moving, a little bit of shaking feeling. That was existing in the Baroque, which tells us that vibrato was also very important in the Baroque. Gimignani, the famous violinist, also talked about uh, vibrato in his book. Tartini also mentioned it, and etc. many other composers and great uh, writers of original sources. But now, if we talk about vibrato, the choreography of the left hand, the vibrato in the left hand, when the hand is in a stable position, in frontal position, is got to be fast, got to be basically... Um, you see? Now, if I have... The position is not frontal anymore. Now, I have the fingers much more in the position that I was telling you before for the legato to don't have it. So... Wrong. So when I may be touching, you know, the lower string, I may be. So what I need, basically, is a position which is not too stable. This got to be learned much after, when we already have a stable position. You know, when we have been growing up a little bit with the instrument. But, mm, It's a vibrato, it's a vibrato, very flexible, it's a fingertip, the tip of the finger is just pulling the string. Vibrato is the mistuning of the note. There is nothing else. The reality of a vibrato is a pitch, you know, we have pitch here of the note and then we move it. I'm going to show you. It's higher. It's lower, so that's a vibrato. So don't think about complicated stuff. Never. It's, you know, sometimes we wonder too much and we start too late with it. Vibrato is the mistuning of the note. Now, in limit is beautiful. If I do like this, then it's drunk. It's not tuning anymore. So. case I'm almost sleeping. Look, my finger is almost sleeping. It's very, very... How can I show you that in the best way? It's, it's not like that. It's... Means I have different positions all the time. The choreography of the left hand is very important. It's flexible. Some people have thought that, or think that there are guitarists more flexible than others. I think this is, again, just not true. If it sounds good, you got to be flexible. Do you understand? So, also if it looks stable, 
doesn't mean that it's not flexible. And this is something we really have to understand. Stability, you know, and flexibility are not opposite. I could be flexible, but very stable at the same time. You know, be water. You know that famous saying by Bruce Lee, for example. Water could be hard and soft, and it's the same word. According to the form it takes and the, the form it hits the next object. So the same is here. How flexible we can be in order to change characters. You know, you... it's not. It's a fast vibrato, so I need the hand in certain position in this millisecond, you know, thousand of a second, you gotta change it fast and then come back. That's actually what is more challenging in the music, and it has to do with interpretation, with the understanding of the musical passages, and that's actually fantastic, isn't it? I mean, this is actually what music is about, and all what we do, all what we do in the guitar, in this case, the guitar, because it's an instrument you are talking about, it's just to express all that in a better way. Um, of course, the resonances help or distort. If I now have a vibrato on the E or, or you see if I have, if I let the strings ringing while I do vibrato in this note, may be really confusing and may be annoying for the ears. That's why it is important to really choose well your finger is, to really choose well your choreography, to feel it, you know. At the same time, while you are practicing, to pay attention to all these kind of things. And of course, we are not machine. The difference between the machine and ourselves is that, the that we have blood, that we have feeling. The possibilities of mistaking of a machine is 0.0001% perhaps. Ours is higher, but we can put feelings into it. We can understand the rhetoric of the passages. We can, we could actually say, say, okay, I need that vibrato here, because the rhetorical meaning of this passage is this one. And I don't want that vibrato which is quite nervous, for example. Mm. I don't want that one here. The hand is in the frontal position, so I can be very different because this also brings the note out of tune, and that's what I mean. So if I got you can hear. So don't fight in cathedral, for example, to move the whole hand. It's no point. Most of the time, one note is enough to bring the chord into a shaking character. Do you understand what I mean? So, if I have one chord, one resonance, and I move one note a little bit, then I make my life easier, according to the position where I am. So if I go on, you see, um, I have changed the position, for example, here. One note, I give you an example with cathedral. So if the first finger is moving, so don't fight trying to change the whole thing, and especially when you are a young student and you find that really tough. I do remember, I do remember. 
And that's why I'm telling you really the truth. I'm not telling you any secret. I'm telling interesting things which are really important for the fast developing of the classical guitar. The continuum developing. I don't think that we have arrived to the top yet. The guitar has developed a lot and it has to continue. Developing, developing is a continuous process. It cannot stop. So, um, I want that you think about this, that it is uh, really very important already from the beginning. Violinists start already with vibrato as soon as they, they can play a couple of notes. Okay? And uh, vibrato, choreography of the hand, connection, legato. This is really what is uh, important for getting a different level, for being a part of the musical world where we want to be included, but it's our responsibility. If we want to talk the same language than pianists, violinists, um, managers that are used to work with those, we cannot complain all the time that they don't want to include us. Perhaps it's also because we are not able, or we have not been able yet to show what the guitar can do. And uh, legato, vibrato are important things for the music are important elements and especially for the guitar because we have it and the piano players for example don't have it you understand so talking about the vibrato they have millions of many other things and we do have some four or five that we cannot skip because this is actually what makes our sound our characteristic and that's why we'll save us so thank you very much for listening to this talk and i hope to meet you soon bye